Welcome, everyone. During the uh, the last webinar, and I don't know exactly how many of you uh, attended that webinar, uh, we talked about estimating in the in the conceptual design phase and how you can use the model-based integration, the, the full 5D set of um, project data, uh, to get timely and more frequent feedback on the cost of your project. Today we will talk about how you can use a, a concept that we call the, the content plan uh, to plan the stages uh, so that you can really achieve the goals that you want to achieve with the model-based solution for each of the stages in your project. An overview of the topics that we will address today. Uh, we will start with an introduction to uh, the, the terms that, that we use to describe the use of content plans. Uh, we talk about stages, uh, design elements, and the, the content plan itself. Then we'll go into answering the question, what you can do with a content plan? What is the purpose and how do you use it? Then the next one is, how can you build a content plan? How do you define the stage of your project so you can use that uh, to, to build a set of 5D information? And last but not least, we'll, uh, we'll show a demonstration based on the model that we also looked at last week and show how you can use the content plan to define those stages to go from, to, from phase to phase. I did show this diagram last week uh, reflecting the design progression uh, of your project with, to the left side of the diagram, the start of the project when the specification level is really low you only know the requirements as they were defined by the owner, the number of square footage of office space that is required and the number of parking spaces, for example. And at that point in time, the cost range that you need to work with is large. You know, the variance in the uh, minimum maximum cost is pretty large. Now, throughout the design phases, however, as the decisions are being made, the specification level goes up and that means that you can cost range that you need to work with. We can project example stages of the model on that curve. So starting with the conceptual design model and gradually we'll add more detailed information working towards the conceptual design phase towards a schematic design model. Of course, number three is the as-built situation when the specification level is 100% and the cost range is zero. Traditionally, going through these design stages, um, the specification level is increased by releasing, releasing design sets. And the, the traditional way is by releasing those design sets for the, for the phases, and starting with the concept then going to schematic design, and then going to DD, and then with the construction documentation set. The problem with this methodology is that because it's paper-based, uh, you cannot do that too often. The frequency that you can release a new design set is limited. Cost-effectiveness is, is free, or you need to take care of a, the cost that that brings along with it. And so there's only so many design iterations that you go through with a, with a paper-based approach. The problem with this is that as soon as there is a design release, uh, you receive the drawing set and you start calculating the cost, uh, but only after a couple of weeks when the design information is processed, you can get back, get back to the design team with the cost feedback. At that point in time, they already proceeded with the with the design, so it's it's basically too late to provide feedback on the already finished phase. With the 5D model, with the integrated set of uh, project information, uh, you can do many more releases, and uh, we call those releases stages. And that helps you to provide your project team with better feedback 
and uh, by doing that, you can make better informed decisions. However, you still need to plan uh, to uh, for what you want to use the model for, and for that reason, uh, we create content plans. Con the content plan really helps you to plan for the stages of project information. So what exactly is a content plan? Uh, the good news is, it is something that you do today. Uh, the content plan, however, formalizes that. It is a document that captures the requirements of information that needs to be available at a certain point in time during the project. So let's take a look at this project team. Uh, the team is discussing uh, the requirements for stage four of the project. And the scheduling, uh, the scheduler in this team uh, identified the need to create the schedule for the concrete work in the basement in this stage. The response of the, the designer, the architect, or the structural engineer is that he realizes that that means that the design for the basement structure needs to be completed at that point because otherwise the schedule cannot be created. And that triggers another reaction, being that the budget for that phase or for the, uh, for the foundation structure needs to be finalized in as well. So otherwise, you cannot check the schedule. What this team is really talking about is, first of all, the schedule information. Secondly, the input or model-based information. And third point is, or the third aspect is cost information. All of that information needs to be available at stage four. So how can the content plan help you to document that? The, um, uh, the, the term that we use uh, to define the information that is captured in the content plan is design element. Design element is every individual uh, unit that you want to document at a certain stage in your project. In an example, we highlight here the uh, a wall in the core of, uh, of the project model. The design element contains model information, uh, cost information, and schedule information. So to, to make sure that the integration works, all of those aspects need to be covered for that particular design element. So what can you then do with that content plan? First of all, it helps you to define what is needed at a certain stage in the project. And these little boxes that we see on the screen here are design elements. In the first stage, we only have a few design elements that we can include in the model. Those could be the zones uh, that we saw in the constructional model, or in the conceptual model, excuse me. Um, at the end of stage one, I have additional elements that I make design decisions for, so the number of elements increases. And that continues from stage two, going to three, four, and five, eventually ending up with a construction documentation set. So when you define a content plan for creating the model, you know what the goals are that you, need, you want to achieve during that stage, and you know what the model is that you need to create during that stage. It also helps you to identify which actions are needed to go from stage three to stage four. For example, I need to add the walls now and, the, um, and all the other concrete elements in the basement structure because I want to create the, structure, uh, the, uh, the schedule and the estimate. 